Let's look at step two for the road to Indy. Come on, Mecca! Hey guys, here we are. This is um, my third car review for the week of iRacing's new content. There's been so much new content. I'm really excited about all the new cars, especially the road ones coming out this week. I think it's going to really um, enhance the iRacing experience for a lot of people. And today we're looking at this one. This is the updated Pro Mazda car, which came out a couple of years ago in real life and has now um, entered the world of iRacing. It's a very cool car. It's um, uh, the same as yesterday's car. It's very alive, but it doesn't want to throw you off the track. And I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, just want to say thanks to everyone for subscribing lately. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet, click on that link below. And um, yeah, hopefully I can give you some good content. So let's have a look around the car. It's got a lot of new features, like that wing. I was going to compare this to the Formula 3. Um, with the Battle of the Little Wings here at week 13, we've got uh, F3, we've got this car, the USF 2000, and the Skippies. And pace-wise, especially here at Lime Rock, the pace is not much slower than the F3s. I don't want to compare it to the F3 though, because in real life, as was brought up by someone yesterday, uh, these two new open wheelers are based on the FIA Formula 4 chassis. They've just got different engine and gearbox combinations, and I want to compare it to the Pro Mazda. So visually, it just looks it looks awesome. It looks like a little baby F1 car, especially with that center livery. <laughs> and... In comparison to the USF 2000, you've got a few more options with the, the wings to play with. There's an extra pane on the front, a totally different design wing on the rear. And um, yeah, it's a very, very comfy experience. Let's have a look inside the cockpit. It's, uh, especially with my Spider-Man pyjamas on, it's... You know, Cozy. <laughs> it's very similar dash to the USF 2000. So it's basically the Cosworth, um, probably the Cosworth software. And yeah, looking around, got me seat belts. It's uh, very cool. Got this right over your head, the induction. And the audio coming through your ears is just amazing. Now, this is uh, going to be a two channel audio. I had a few comments this week about the audio not being too good, but when you set it up with surround sound and you can hear things happening in the background through the headphones, is um, oh, it's awesome. You can hear the cars coming behind you, in front, beside you. Very cool fun. So as far as setup goes, first thing I did yesterday, uh, I had issues with the steering, so I recalibrated my steering and pedals straight away. Um, I've got the R factor, sorry, R factor. I've got the V3 pedals for Fanatec, so force factor is off and auto clutch. That's pretty much all I needed to do with the options. Uh, with setup, I found having different setups, you could really feel, um, you could really feel the behavior of the car change. And uh, for example, I'm only using iRacing baseline setups. The baseline itself, I found, was really good getting out of a corner. And delta-wise, I was really punching it. But then I changed to medium downforce. And although it was understeery, my initial turn-in was really good. So changing uh, your driving style according to the setups was actually quite easy. I'm not a professional racing driver. And I found that adapting to the car's um, behavior was, uh, it really talks to you and found it yeah quite easy. So I've stuck with the medium and times wise, I'm up to an optimal of 45.1 compared to a 45.2 best lap time. And in comparison to the Formula 3s, which is the yellow ones here, uh, it's 43.7. So, we're about 1.5 seconds per lap slower, 
but you'll find that's their ultimate fast lap. When you get into a pack of Formula 3s in a practice session here, you'll find that um, there's not that much difference between this car and the Formula 3. So having them mixed up in the little wings is... Um, it's actually very cool to compare them side by side. They are ultimately faster. And when the guys can hook up a good lap, they yeah, they they start to creep away or they start to really creep up onto you. So um yeah, without any further ado, how much fuel we got? 15 litres. Let's listen to this car. They get a nice intro screen. Oh yeah. You get that raspy um, tinny noise out of the exhaust. And, uh, yeah, let's do this. What I did find, um, I'll jump in. I'll jump back in. If I push the pit limiter now. So, well, with other cars, like the Porsche, for example, as soon as you jump in the car and press the pit lane button, it would engage the pit lane. But with this car, you have to wait for that splash screen to finish. So this is the USF 2000 car in front of us. We can use a lap to warm the tyres up. As far as the characteristics of the car, I'm really using my driving style closer to the Formula 3. Especially here at Lime Rock. We'll get past him. After a couple laps, the tyres really come on. Now all I've done is grab the medium set up and I see there's an initial understeer but once the tyres warm up it's a medium set up with 15 litres of fuel Also, when I first jumped into the car, I was actually shifting a lot earlier. Um, going by the audio, this thing revs out a lot more than what you'd expect. But that's something you can get used to, you can tune into it pretty quick. <laughs> that went well. Alright, let's try that again. So let me know what you think, guys. This is, um... This is going to be a very... Uh, niche car, the Pro Mazda scene is still, um, it's not massive, but the die-hard iRacing guys still races, or oh, the Pro Mazda week in, week out, but the Pro Mazda itself is a legacy car now, and this is supposed to be a direct replacement, and I really like it. I haven't driven the Pro Mazda much lately. But when I first got into iRacing, I was really into it. That was my car. I was uh, really into project cars before this. And the Pro Mazda really reminded me of um, the Formula C car that they had in that game. Come on. I just can't turn it. I 
did a 45-5 earlier, I think. 45-6. There we go. Driving style is <laughs> probably going to be better than mine. This is more of a review of what I think about it and uh, just to give you an impression of what the car's like before you put down some hard earned cash. So with this particular setup, the um, I've got to turn in earlier than what I should be. So that's what I mean about changing your driving style according to what the setup asks for. You're either going to be, well personally, you're either going to be fast in or fast out of a corner. Little lift. I'm not too sure if he's put anything out yet. Look out for TJ Sim Racing. Thomas Jordan was pretty much the, well, he was the Pro Master Guru. And you can learn a hell of a lot from, from him. And every now and then he would um, put a setup in his videos. Well, the car feels great. It's, um, really grippy. And the more time you spend in the car, the more comfortable you get with pushing it further and further. There we go, flat. There's me 45 something. What's that a 45.5? Not too bad. Yeah, someone said yesterday with the USF 2000, they um, increased the cameras all the way, dropped the tire pressures, and they got whole every time. And um, I tried that, and it did happen in this car, but I really had a lot of initial understeer before the tires came to temp. happy with that. Very, very happy with that. So it's tier two of the Road to Indy. The 
let's have a look at this thing from the outside, eh? I like it a lot. So let's have a look at the calendar for this car. Um, the season coming up next week, we're going to have a mixture of road and oval, which I'm really looking forward to. So they give you a Watkins Glen, something that's very popular uh, that everyone likes. Road America, same thing. Get the participation up. And they're going to throw you a curveball with Phoenix Raceway Oval, 70 laps. Uh, that'll include full course cautions. Um, they're going to be standing start races, except for the ovals. Then we've got Indy Road Course, uh, got um, Montreal, Sabrina International, Spa, Worldwide Technology Raceway, another oval, Mid Ohio, Suzuka, another oval, Lucas Oil, really good mix of road and oval. And then, uh, Laguna Seca, and then we're going to scare everyone stupid with six laps of uh, the Nordisch Life. Really, really nice car. So thank you to everyone who watched. Really appreciate it. Um, if you like this content, yeah, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and come join me on the weekend for the community race. It's going to be Sunday morning, Melbourne time, but don't worry. It's going to be like 3 a.m. Melbourne time. At New York time, it's going to be roughly 3 a.m. Sorry, 4 p.m. No, it's going to be midday Saturday and 5 p.m. England time Saturday. Yeah, feel free to join me. Thumbs up if you liked it. Down if you didn't. I'll be on Twitch tomorrow. Might see you there. Have a great day, guys. Bye.